Remember that bell? Pause has been eliminated. But what led up to the removal of the period? And? I feel like I'm going to die. So why did this student feel like he was going to die? We have the full story. A pipe bomb in the cafeteria and a shooting in the office? What sparked a massive police presence at Roseville? All of this and more on TigerCast News on April 30th, 2012. The Eye of the Tiger. This is Tiger Cast News with Brooke West and Daniel Weta. Just a few weeks ago, pause was completely removed from the schedule, but why? We spoke with Principal Basham, who gave us some insight to his decision to pull the period. I made the decision that, that with star testing coming on, AP testing coming on, um, it, it didn't make sense to continue with the current schedule because I knew we'd miss a lot of days, as well as the feedback I was receiving from teachers, either by going into the classroom or hearing back from them, was that the current system wasn't working. Students, of course, had opinions on this topic as well. Here's what some of you had to say. It's kind of strange that they would do it, you know, in the middle of our the fourth trimester or whatever it's called. And then um, it's kind of annoying because I was so used to it. Why wouldn't they do it? start of next year. Like pause did not help me at all and now I just I like having a sa the same schedule every day. I love school now and I think it's um, <laughs> um, perfect that it, we don't have any more pause. Pause has been a contentious topic around campus and now that it's been eliminated some are celebrating and some not so much. Senior Keaton Landenberger and sophomore Caitlin Rowland wrote opposing opinions on this topic which will be in today's paper. They join us now from the Eye of the Tiger newsroom. So Caitlin we'll start with you. You wrote an opinion basically saying administration was right to remove the period completely saying it quote created more problems than it solved end quote. What do you mean by that? Well, I wrote that it created more problems than it solved because school-wide there was a lot of confusion among the students, the teachers, and the administrators because they changed the schedule so often and we barely had time to wrap our minds around the current schedule before it's changed again. And now, Keaton, your opinion is the opposite, right? Yes, it is, Daniel. I believe that pause should stay within the curriculum. Even though two years is not a long time for pause, we have seen some positive improvement without outside of test work. We're trying to get out of PI status and our 30% DF rate, and I believe pause is something that we need to use to stay in there. Without there, we're just taking a step back, not getting any closer to our goal. And you wrote that you believe, quote, it has a definite positive effect on students, whether they want to believe it or not, end quote. But as you said in your piece, the majority of students probably don't agree with you. Why is that? I believe that the majority of students do not agree that pause is a good part of the curriculum right now because they're just looking at their current situation and their own individual situation. They're looking at, you're an AP test taker and you don't have that many easy classes or you need help with certain things. You want extracurriculars, you want those advantages, and since those are gone, you don't believe pause is necessary. And those students that do need pause are not going to take full advantage of it. Either way, they currently believe pause is not effective for you. Caitlin, you even said that pause was the low point of your day. Explain that. Well, I wrote that it was the low point of my day because I think I speak for myself as well as all the students here at Roseville High that PAUSE was generally not a well-liked program. Although it claimed to have raised our test scores, it wasn't really worth the time because by the time you got to your PAUSE class, you didn't have much time to work and therefore it wasn't really worth all the hassle. Kate Landenberger and Caitlin Rowland, thanks for joining us. Remember, you can read their opinions in today's newspaper or online at iThetigerNews.com. Thank you. Thank you. We're now one week into star testing, but there's something different about this year's testing. Jessica Wang takes a look for us. Yes, Brooke, many students are taking the star test a lot more serious this year because of one crucial change. Star testing is different this year. I'm trying harder than I was because I'm trying to increase some of my grades from last term. For the first time in Roseville High School history, grade bumps are being offered school-wide to students who score proficient or advanced on the STAR test. Kids have been taking these tests since they were in first grade, as you well know, mm -hmm. and it becomes pretty much by rote, and it loses its significance and meaning. And the students feel, and rightfully so, well, what's in it for me? Assistant Principal Judy Daniels says this applies to classes for the entire year, but not last year. Okay. If they took it when they were a sophomore, mm -hmm. and they're now a junior, taking the test, then it wouldn't. Some students are saying they feel more motivated to do well on what has been labeled as a pointless test. Well, I think it will be good for students because they'll want to try more to raise their grades and 
especially if it'll work for both terms. So if you struggled with something last term, you can still bump it up. However, other students don't think students will be more motivated. Um, there are a lot of people that no matter what, uh, no matter what they do to tell them to like to perform better, that they, they just don't care about it. Students taking AP classes must score proficient or advanced on the annual test and a four or higher on the AP exam in order to qualify for the grade bump. And some students who are taking AP classes think this is unfair. And to think that I had to get a four on there and then get really good on the CSTs too to get a grade bump, I think I just try really hard in the class and not do anything at all in the tests. Daniel told us she'll be interested to see how much this will change the API scores for next year. For example, when Granite Bay implemented this policy, their API score shot up 30 points. For TigerCast News, I'm Jessica Wang. Thanks, Jessica. Star testing continues this week. So what does that mean for the schedule? Let's take a look. Tomorrow and Thursday, students will go straight to first period to start off the day, then go to their star testing locations for social studies and science or a pre-K seat for freshmen. Students will then go to periods two and three, lunch, then fourth period. Remember, this is different than last week when star testing started off the day. Also last week, students found out who next year's ASB officers will be. Roosevelt's ASB president will be junior Ariana Christ. We caught up with her to find out her plans for next year. One of the cool things that we're starting this year and planning on continuing is we have a Twitter account for student government so you can follow what's going on on campus. So who else will be leading Roseville next year? Sophomore Mackenzie Priley will be assuming the position of ASB Vice President. Sophomore Lindsay Anderson will be Secretary. And Sophomore Sam Corville will be Treasurer. Student Government Teacher Lindsay Parker told us there was a good, officer, good voter turnout rather, of about 15% of eligible voters who cast a ballot. Class officer elections are this week. See the massive police presence outside Roseville? This was all in response to a bomb threat made on April 1st. The catch? April 1st is, well, April Fool's Day. The hoax was called in from a 30-year-old man in Virginia who even knew the campus layout. Police did not want to risk anything, so a tactical team was called out to the campus. The man told police there was a pipe bomb in the cafeteria and a shooting in the admin building. April Fool's Day was a Sunday, so no one was actually here, and it was also spring break. But, Brooke, I mean, that would have been pretty scary if that actually happened during a school day. Definitely. The reaction from students probably would have been huge. Yeah, and I think it would have been all over Twitter and Facebook. It just would have been pretty scary. Yeah, all over the social networks for sure. And just about a week ago, some more police activity. Officer Cortez made two arrests related to 420, a day known for widespread drug use. Two students here were arrested for selling drugs to a minor. In fact, Brooke, we spoke to one of the students involved in this incident. He told us the two who were arrested were selling pot brownies. This student bought some of those brownies, which actually contained something more than just marijuana, according to doctors. It started getting shaky, and my, my chest started getting shaky, and like, and like my heart rate would go really fast, and then felt like it would slow down, and my arm started shaking, and then... And then I uh, like fell out of my chair. As you can tell, his voice has been distorted to preserve his identity. He also told us how he felt during the situation. Laying down on the floor and like freaking out, like I told my mom, I like looked at her and I was like, Mom, like I feel like I'm gonna die. And like I really felt like that. Like, like I didn't think I was gonna come out of it. That student was also suspended. Are you one of the many seniors coming down with senioritis? We want to know your symptoms of senioritis. Are you doing less homework, showing up later? Tell us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash iTheTigerNews for our Tiger Talk segment. We will read your comments on our next TigerCast. On our next TigerCast, we will take a look at senioritis and see how many seniors are really coming down with the so-called disease. Before we go, we wanted to leave you with this. Did you see a turkey in the tree the other day? Well, that's right. Somehow this turkey found its way up to that branch and got many double takes from students walking by. That's definitely not something you see every day. I mean, have you seen a turkey in a tree before? No, I have not, but there's a first time for everything. I mean, so. <laughs> yeah.
Remember, the latest Roseville High School news is always on at eyeofthetigernews.com. You can also see this week's TigerCast Tiger Highlights with Mark Reese and Dalton Blazer for the latest sports at eyeofthetigernews.com slash tigerhighlights or click this video right now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.